7.45 on a cold winter morning, and Charles Gindin, or Charlie, as he's known to almost everyone, is on his way to yet another meeting. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. How are you? Nice Charlie, how are you? Today, it's the Board of Trustees for the Woodruff Health Sciences, but it could just as easily be any one of half a dozen committees and boards he's involved with at Emory. I think the most impressive thing to me about Charlie has been how well prepared he is for the board meetings, that no, no matter how thick the brochure or the plans for the meeting might be, Charlie has seemed to have read them all and thought about them. Aren't you retired? I thought so, but my, my wife says I flunked retirement. Charlie Gindin's ties to Emory go back more than 60 years, all the way back to 1951, when he enrolled as a freshman. I've been best to tell you how long we've been friends. Uh, we, we, Jimmy Williams met him when they both joined the same fraternity, and the two have remained close friends ever since. It was Jimmy Williams who got Charlie into the banking business. It was, an, it was easy for, to get him a job. Uh, everybody wanted Charlie. He was bright and impressive. It was the start of a long career, but all the while, he stayed involved with Emory. It started with the Alumni Association and steadily grew until his role spanned both the university and health care. If Charlie had worked as hard for SunTrust as he did for Emory, our stock would be at 100. Uh, and, and I really, he, I mean, he worked for Emory. He, he just wanted to be a part of it. But helping his alma mater would only be one of the reasons Charlie Gindin has been so active in so many areas of the health sciences at Emory. He's also committed because of people like Emmett Walsh. Oh, that's definitely the place to go. Everybody knows that Emory's the best place to go to get things done. Born with transposition of the great vessels, Emmett went through heart surgery when he was born and again when he was two. After that, things seemed to be fine. I grew up feeling totally normal and never crossed my mind that it would wear out. Never even thought about it. But his heart was wearing out. Emmett needed a transplant, and he fought to have it at Emory. My uh, favorite superhero is Superman, and everything I have on it pretty much has Superman on it. My car, my ring, my wallet, and everything. And that's how I feel. And it's, it's just giving me a chance to go out there and try to do everything. Emory gave me my, uh, my life back. Making sure Emory University Hospital is always there and ready to handle complex cases like Emmett's is important to Charlie Gindin. I know that he, he's always impressed when he hears a comment that, that our acuity index, that is the sickness, the level of sickness of our patients is very high, I think one of the highest in the, in the whole nation. Uh, a substantial number of our patients for our specialists come from other specialists. So you know those are really, uh, uh, really tough cases. Emory's importance isn't limited to complex cases. Emory Healthcare also provides tens of millions of dollars in unreimbursed care each year. Emory, you know, gives out about $68 million a year in charity care. And I think this kind of thing impresses Charlie, that he wants to be with an organization that is giving back a lot to the community. Thankfully, it also impresses Mary Gindin. After all, she's the one who's had to share her husband with Emory. I'm proud of what he does out there. And I think uh, I'm, I love his loyalty and I like the fact that he has something that's special to do. Charlie Gindin has never sought attention for all the resources and time he's devoted to Emory, but you can't keep that kind of generosity secret. He does the kind of stuff you don't keep secret. He uh, does things that uh, you want to talk about and has led that kind of life.